Welcome back to my channel. I am filming today in front of my Christmas tree. I'm in the Christmas spirit already. It's crazy. I've decorated my entire house. I am going to take you on a home tour as well in a future video, so stay tuned. But today is going to be meal prep. I, as you know, if you follow my channel, I pack both my breakfast and lunch now to take to work. I did lose 1.4 last week, and I am attributing a big chunk of that to meal prepping my lunches now instead of eating at work. So you are going to get a breakfast recipe, you are going to get a lunch recipe, and a bonus recipe uh, that I made just to meal prep for future recipes. So three recipes in this video as well as an entire uh, meal prep. So I hope that you enjoy and if you'd like to see what I am packing for breakfast, lunch, and a bonus recipe, stay tuned. The very first thing I'm going to do today in meal prep is get my zero point crock pot marinara going. I did make this in a previous video, but it was a long time ago. And I'm gonna remake this because this marinara sauce is amazing and is zero points. So let me show you what is in the marinara and then we'll get it all put together into the crock pot. So you need two cans of crushed tomatoes, two cans of diced tomatoes, minced garlic or fresh garlic, one large onion. Since I only have these smaller ones, I'm going to go ahead and chop up two onions. And then for seasonings, you need oregano, basil, sea salt, pepper, and the recipe also calls for roasted red pepper flakes. I'm just not going to put that in mine because my husband doesn't do anything spicy. And then all of these ingredients are going to go here into my crock pot, and I am just going to let it cook all day while I do the rest of my meal prep. So the crock pot marinara is done. What I do typically is I'll use a measuring cup and scoop it into both sandwich size bags and the quart size Ziplocs. And then these can go directly into the freezer. This smells so good. I will show you what it looks like once I bake all of the sauce up. So here are my bags all portioned out. So you can see here that I have the large Ziploc bag, so a spaghetti times two. So that means that that's enough typically for my husband and myself for spaghetti night. And then I have these smaller bags that are great for pizza night, or if I'm just doing my own zero point marinara for spaghetti, or just if I'm looking for something a little bit smaller. And these bags, these crock pot bags, make cleanup so easy. Look at that, you guys. So I would highly recommend investing in these crock pot bags. And there is my zero point marinara recipe will be linked below. So we're ready to put everything together. You can see here that I've added my garlic to my crock pot and here are the rest of my ingredients. So we're just gonna go through one by one. So first we're gonna add in our two cans of our crushed tomatoes. And this marinara, you guys, is so good. It's just as good as canned or bottled marinara. And again, zero smart points. And then I'm going to grab my other can of my tomatoes and add that. I know it seems like a lot, but um, I will show you how I bake this up. And I just freeze it. And then it lasts forever. And then we're going to do a can of our diced tomatoes. And it's, as you can see, very easy. We're just adding everything to our crock pot. I have another can of diced tomatoes. And then you can see here that I chopped up my onion. So I'm going to add all of my onion. And then last is your spices. So again, I am not using red pepper flakes. So I'm going to do ground black pepper. And you just want to season this to taste, or you can follow what the recipe says, but as you know, I usually spice to taste. And then we have some salt as well that we're going to add. And then I'm going to add in some basil. And this, of course, is what's going to give your marinara that Italian flavor is this basil and uh, the oregano. And last but not least is oregano. So I'm going to add in some of that. And then you're just going to give this a stir and put this on low for eight hours or high for five to six hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it on low. And there you have it. Our marinara is ready to get put on to low for eight hours. I will be back when it is done and show you the finished marinara as well as how I package it up for good freezer storage. Um, it can last months and months and months. So. I hope you enjoyed this recipe and let's move on to the rest of our meal prep. 
As part of my breakfast for this week, I am so excited to have these. This recipe is from My Journey to Healthy, Jess on YouTube. If you haven't checked out her channel, definitely do so. She does amazing recipes. Um, yeah, she's, she's pretty amazing. So this uh, recipe came from her, and these are apple cider muffins. And I'm going to have this with uh, breakfast this week. So easy recipe, we have sugar-free spiced apple cider instant mix, pumpkin pie spice, a box of Pillsbury classic yellow sugar-free cake mix, unsweetened applesauce, three eggs, and one apple. And this is a fairly simple recipe and these muffins sound so good, I cannot wait to have them. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is you can see here that I have one cup of boiling water and to that I'm going to add one packet of the sugar-free apple cider and we're gonna stir that together until combined and then we are gonna set this aside um, this is going to be added to our mix later and we do want to give it an opportunity to cool just a little bit cuz it was hot Woo, steamy alrighty so I've got my one pack of apple cider mixed in my pitcher here and I'm just gonna get this set aside Next, we need to get our apple prepared. So we are going to peel, dice, and core this apple. And this is also going to get added to our muffin. So I'm gonna get that cut up. Next, we're gonna get everything combined together. You can see here in my bowl that I have my sugar-free yellow cake mix. I have already added that to my bowl. And to my cake mix, we are going to add in three eggs. My trick is to always crack those in a separate bowl and that ensures that I don't get any eggshells because I'm pretty good at getting eggshells. And then we have one third cup of unsweetened applesauce. And then I have my apple cider that has now cooled that I mixed with the water. And then I'm going to add in my pumpkin pie. I'm going to use Dax. I love Dax. I have Dax on hand. So I'm going to just add that. It does call for one teaspoon. I'm going to add a little bit more because I really like mine flavorful. And then um, I'm going to mix all of this together. I'm going to give this a quick stir before we add in that other packet of apple cider mix. Now you can put as much or as little of the sugar-free apple cider in as you like. Now, when I watched Jess's video, she had originally tried it with just this apple cider mixed with the water. And she said it just wasn't cidery enough for what she wanted for the muffins. And so she did go ahead and decide to add that additional packet of sugar-free apple cider. So I love the spicy, the cider. I love those flavors. So I am definitely going to add this second packet of cider. But again, do um, taste it. Make sure that it's, you know, the consistency and taste of the muffins that you want. But yeah, I'm in for the second pack. So here's that second pack of cider. And we're just going to add that into our ingredients once we've giving it a good stir and you can see here um, it looks really good so I'm going to stir in this other pack of cider just kind of make sure everything's combined of course you don't want to over mix just like you don't with any other type of cake or muffin mix because it will make your muffins more spongy than moist so I've added that other pack of apple cider and the last step is to add in your apples so here are my diced up apples so I'm gonna go ahead and add those. And then you just kinda of wanna gently fold those in to your muffin mix. And then that's pretty much it. I mean, again, this is super easy, but oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I love apple anything. I love cider. Oh my gosh, I love cider. And I could not find these packets and I was so excited when I did so that I could make these muffins. So let's get these into our muffin tin and get these into the oven. 
I have my muffin tin here, greased with some nonstick cooking spray. I'm just gonna use a cookie scoop. I want 20 muffins out of my batter. That is what um, it asks that you get out of your batter to constitute the point. So I'm going to get 12 of these filled and then we'll put this pan in the oven and when they come out, we'll get an additional eight muffins out of this. So I just wanna make sure, you guys, when you're filling these, that you aren't overfilling them so that you are ensuring that you get 20 muffins. Otherwise, the point value is going to increase. And if that's okay with you, um, that's fine if you wanna make your muffins bigger, but I wanna keep these somewhat low points because I'm also going to have other pieces of to my breakfast. So I'm gonna get all these filled up and ready for the oven. So here are my filled muffin cups. I ended up doing two cookie size scoops in each pan. And you can see here, I have quite a bit left. So I'm gonna be probably about perfect on the 20 muffins. So these need to go in the oven at 325 for about 20, 20, 25 minutes or until your toothpick comes out clean. Our apple cider muffins are out of the oven. These look so good, I cannot wait. To have these i probably will try them and let you guys know how they are in my what i eat in a day video but yeah super excited to have these as a part of my breakfast so i'm going to get the last eight in the oven and then i'll show you all of the completed muffins here are our completed apple cider muffins you guys i tried these these are so good these are as good if not better than the pumpkin um harvest ones that we made with the cranberries and everything these muffins are phenomenal so one of these muffins is two smart points and the recipe again made 20 muffins i am just going to put them in this container here with a lid and put them in the fridge so that i have them available to take and eat oh my gosh so good as part of my breakfast this week, I'm gonna go ahead and make some scrambled eggs. I am going to use this Almond Breeze Creamy Milk in lieu of regular milk, and that will make keep my eggs at zero points. And I'm just gonna make 10 scrambled eggs, two for each day. So I'm gonna get those going on the oven. Here are my eggs being ready to scramble. So I added that unsweetened creamy almond milk as well as some Trader Joe's season salt and pepper. So I'm gonna get these cooked, I'll divide these out, and I'll show you exactly what I'm taking for breakfast. So here are my breakfast for the week. It looks a little bit different. I'm trying this approach to bringing breakfast to work rather than so many individual little containers. So what I have here is I have a China plate and on this plate I've put all of the components of my breakfast. So you can see here that I have a sandwich size bag of blueberries. I bake those up individually so that they can, you know, they don't mix in with my other food. I also have three of the Jimmy Dean fully cooked sausage links. These are them. I love these. These are the best sausage links. I just toss them in the microwave for a few seconds and they taste delicious. And then I have my two scrambled eggs that I made. Now here's a trick you guys for meal prepping eggs, especially scrambled. Don't cook them all the way through. And then that way when you microwave them or warm them up, they don't get spongy, they stay moist because they're not entirely cooked in the pan. So I did not cook my eggs 100% through. And then I also have wrapped in saran wrap, woohoo! Major party foul. Uh, I have in saran wrap here one of my apple cider muffins. So this makes it easy because I can pull this and this off when I go to warm up my eggs and sausage. And then I'm gonna wrap my plates in saran wrap and then each day I will just take one of my pre-made plates for my breakfast. So I'm gonna try this this week. I'll let you know how it goes. My only concern is the plate getting soggy, but these chinette plates are really thick, so I'm hoping that that alleviates that issue. So this is going to be breakfast for the week. It is a total of five smart points. The only things we are counting points for is the turkey sausage. It is one point per link, so that's three. And then my apple cider muffins are two points. So here's breakfast. Let's get started on breakfast meal prep for the week. So this week I am bringing a cheesy bacon potato casserole. And I'm going to divide this up into individual servings for the week. And then I will show you what I'm going to pair the casserole with. So what is in this casserole are home fries. So I'm going to use these golden crispy rounds from Orida. You need some sort of light cheese, center cut bacon, one quarter cup of onion, so I'm gonna go ahead and use up the rest of this red onion. 
red pepper, and then you need a can of Progresso creamy potato with bacon and cheese soup. And then not pictured here is salt and pepper. We will add that as well. So let's get started on our casserole. The first thing I need to do is get my bacon cooked. Uh, you can see here that I've lined my baking sheet with two sheets of parchment paper to ensure that the grease stays centered on the paper. I am going to cook all of my center cut bacon. The recipe only calls for four slices, but I hate cooking bacon, and so I'm just gonna cook it all. And what I do is put the rest in a Ziploc bag and throw it in the freezer. I will show that to you uh, once the bacon is cooked. But that is the first step in preparing uh, our breakfast for this week. So you can see here, I just put my bacon in the Ziploc bag. I'm actually gonna throw this in the fridge. Um, I think that my husband will probably eat this for breakfast throughout the week, but you can either throw this in the fridge or freezer, and that way you don't have to cook bacon every time. While our bacon is cooking in the oven, we are going to add the remainder of our ingredients to a bowl and mix all of that together. The bacon actually gets sprinkled on top. So we can do this step while the bacon is cooking. And correction, this is for my lunches for the week, not my breakfast. I completely got miscalculated because of the bacon, I think. So anyway, this is a portion of my lunches for the week. So let's add our ingredients to our bowl. So the first thing is our Progresso Light Creamy Potato Bacon and Cheese Soup. So again, everything's just gonna get put into this one bowl for mixing. We are going to add in our quarter cup of diced onion. And then about one third of a cup of diced red pepper. You can use any pepper you want. I just decided to use the red. That's actually what I had on hand. One quarter cup of light shredded mozzarella. And then we have three cups of home fries. And last but not least is our salt and our pepper. So we're just gonna salt that to taste. And then add in our pepper. And then we're gonna stir this all together. Next, we're going to grease the bottom of our dish. You can see I've mixed everything together. And then we are going to pour our potato mixture into our dish. Here's what our bake looks like. I'm gonna let this set aside while the bacon finishes cooking. Then we'll crumble that on top and get this into the oven. It looks so good. It's going to be a very nice, hearty lunch. And here's our cheesy potato bacon bake ready to go into the oven. It is going to cook for about 30 minutes at 350. So I will be back to show you the finished product and then we'll dice this up and box it up for lunches for the week. But this looks so good. Super excited. Here's our lunch bake out of the oven. This looks so good. It looks so creamy and delicious and everything's better with bacon. So I'm gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, let this cool and then I'm going to cut this into six slices because it does make six servings. And I will show you what my completed breakfast for the week will look like, but this lunches, oh my goodness, I keep saying breakfast. I'm so sorry, you guys, my lunches for the week. What else I pair with this bake for lunch? As you can see here, I've cut this bake into six slices. So this is one slice, that's a good size serving. So I'm gonna get this dished up and put this aside for my lunches for the week and I will show you what the serving size looks like. This is one serving in my Tupperware container. It doesn't look that great on camera, but I did taste a little bit and it is so good. It tastes like creamy, cheesy potato. Oh, it's delicious. So I'm gonna put these into little individual containers and those are going to be what I'm going to take as part of my lunch this week. So I'll get these together and then I'll be back to show you exactly what I'm going to take each day for lunch. With my bake, I'm also going to take some turkey breast only because there isn't a lot of protein in my bake that I'm having. So this particular mesquite smoked turkey breast is one smart point for two ounces. This is what two ounces looks like. You can see that I have measured that out on my food scale. So I'm just gonna measure out five two ounce bags of turkey and I'm going to take that as well for lunch. So this is going to be my lunch for the week. So unfortunately I was only able to get four bags out of the turkey. So I'll have to sub an additional source of protein for one day, maybe a cheese stick or something like that. But I have one point worth of the turkey 
I bagged up some washed and de-stemmed grapes, so I will take one of these each day. I always take Smart Sweets. This is kind of my dessert after lunch. I always kind of want something sweet, so two packages of these is one Smart Point. And then here in these delicious containers is my um, bacon cheesy potato bake, so that is the main part of my lunch. I am also going to take a Greek yogurt for two Smart Points, and then I have these little individual packaged up containers of ranch, and I throw these in my fridge at work in case I wanna have a salad as well, and that is one Smart Point. So if I do not have a salad, my lunch is a total of four, five, six, seven, eight Smart Points. If I have a salad, my lunch would be nine Smart Points. I do usually eat a fairly big lunch so that it tides me over through the rest of my workday. So this is what I'm taking for lunches this week. Here's what I'm gonna be taking this week for snacks. And again, a reminder, I do not always eat all of these items every day. This is just my plan for what I'm going to have ready to take for the week. So I'm gonna have these Utz Halloween pretzels and mini cheese balls. I do have quite a few of these left and I wanna get them finished up. I actually love these. These are seriously, you guys, some of the best, best pretzels I've ever had. And these mini cheese balls, they're like a greasy cheesy they're delicious and each one of these packs is one smart point so i will probably only eat one pack per day but i'll bring a variety to work i am going to bring carrots and my dip i did make this in my meal prep last week this is non-fat greek yogurt mixed with one slice of laughing cow cheese it makes a phenomenal dip for only one smart point so i'm going to bring that I'm also going to throw some of these baked protein bars from WW in my drawer at work. These are three smart points, but they do have protein, so they definitely tide you over. But if I'm going to have a bar, I obviously want to have the built bar. Um, these are also three smart points. So look at this, you guys. Look at the difference. So this little protein bar is that big. And, or you can have an entire built bar for the same amount of protein and points. I'm sorry, not protein, points. So this is something I will have every single day. So you can see here that I have five bars set aside to take to work. I'm going to bring a chocolate coconut cream, a chocolate raspberry cream, a chocolate mint cream, a chocolate salted caramel, and a chocolate vanilla cream. And these built bars, you guys, are three smart points per bar. There is 15 grams of protein and only 110 calories per bar. So you can't beat it for a protein bar. And the best part about these, they don't taste like a protein bar. They taste like a candy bar. I do have a discount code that Built Bar so graciously gave me that I will link in the description box below. You can get six Built Bars for $3 with the discount code GENSWWSAMPLE. It is on the screen here as well. Or you can get a full box of one solid flavor or a variety pack for $10 off using the code Jen's WW journey. So I will put those codes on the screen and link them in the description box below. If you haven't tried these, you guys, it's $3 for six bars with free shipping. So definitely worth a try. So this is what I'm going to be taking this week for my snack. Thank you for spending the day with me and joining me on my meal prep for the week. I hope that you enjoyed all three recipes that I prepped for you. If you haven't already, I would absolutely love it if you would join my YouTube friends and family and subscribe to my channel. Give my video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of the three recipes and if you uh, think it's a good idea that I am now bringing my lunch to work. So far, so good and I'm going to continue, but I'm just thinking um, that it'd be nice to hear some feedback from you guys. So again, thank you so much for watching and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye now.